Please welcome Janice Dreibel. So depression and anxiety have always been a part of my life as long as I can remember, but they're always kind of like the annoying neighbors whose dog barks all the time or who is always, their kids are always over at your house. You can deal with it and it's not a big deal, but then a few years ago, they moved in on a more permanent basis. In an eight year period, I got married, had three babies, lost four members of my family in five years, my grandpa, my dad, my aunt, and my niece. Built and moved into a new home and built and moved into a new library, something I will never do again. Um, <laughs> As I was going through everything, I felt like I was handling it great. We had a baby, I cheered and was happy. We had a death, we cried and we mourned. A new house and a new library are great, so bring on the happiness. Oh, and my husband changed departments. Bigger department, great money, great news, right? More money, great news. But finally, my body and my mind had enough and I broke. I became someone that I didn't really recognize. Standing in the shower, getting ready for work, really looking at the razor. Can I cut myself with this? If I cut myself up high enough on my leg, no one can see it. If I cut myself, would it allow all of the fear and sadness and embarrassment out? If I cut myself, would I at least have an injury for my pain? Laying in bed at night, my brave, sweet husband, my rock, not home from work yet. Visions of a police chief coming to my home, running through my head. My sweet husband is gone. Visions of his funeral run through my head. Deep and real sadness overwhelm me. Tears flow until I can convince myself that what I see is not real. Driving down the road, not wanting to wear my seatbelt. Looking at passing trees trying to find one large enough to run into, one that will make a big enough collision that I will be dead on impact. Captured in my head and my thoughts until a young voice reminds me to put on my seatbelt. I'm pulled back to the present. I can't do anything now. My babies are in the car. The everyday thoughts that tell me I'm not good enough. Just stop trying. No one wants to be your friend. It's better just to stay home where you are safe where you don't have to try and you don't have to fail. Trying to convince myself that I won't be fired for some mistake that I have made at work. My husband talking and talking with me to get me out of the anxiety spiral. Him finally saying, it is fine. What is the worst thing they can do, fire you? And in my mind, I scream back, no. The worst thing they can do is not like me and then fire me but I can't say it out loud because it's so dumb. Why would I be more worried about my bosses not liking me than getting fired? I've had my husband ask me if I needed to be committed because he was afraid of what I may do. During the awful period of the anxiety, he would answer his phone no matter what he was doing. Now let me explain. My husband doesn't have a normal office job where he can come to the phone whenever he wants. At the time, he was a homicide and sex abuse detective and on the SWAT team. But he answered the phone for me every single time. When my boys were young, they saw me so depressed that I would lie on the couch and watch TV with them sitting on me so at least we would have contact. Then I would crawl to the shower to get ready for work. I have done just enough housework to hopefully make it seem like I have done something besides lay around. I've worried that I have damaged my children because they have had to live through the side effects of my depression and anxiety. I have felt small and weak, really afraid to step out and try for things that may be hard because of what was going on in my mind. But I've learned that I'm stronger than I thought. And I've learned that the scary thoughts and feelings are destroyed when they are shared. I was lucky enough to have a strong support system that helped me explore different healing techniques and rescued me on the bad days. 
I learned that getting professional help was the best thing I could do for myself and my family. My boys have seen me at my lowest, but they have also seen me fight my way back to them. I have found doctors and counselors that were able and willing to help find the best treatments for me. I have learned that there isn't shame in taking medication for depression and anxiety. But most importantly, I've learned that I wasn't broken. I never was, and neither are you. When I got to feeling better, I called my husband. When he answered, I realized from the tone of his voice that he couldn't really talk. He was actually interviewing a suspect at the time. Um, I told him to call me back when he could and hung up the phone. When he called me back, I said, why do you answer the phone when you're busy? And all he would say is because I wanted to make sure that you were okay. I told him that I was good, that he didn't have to answer the phone every time I call. And now, every time I leave a message, I'm reminded that I am better, that I am trusted by my husband, and I am strong. I'm probably one of the few women in the world that feels pride every time I get to leave a message on my husband's voicemail. Depression and anxiety have now gone back to being the annoying neighbors. I have to deal with them sometimes, but they don't live with me every day. And for this, I, will, I am grateful. And for this, I will fight every day. Thank you.